Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. Good evening from Kimberbell headquarters in Logan, Utah. My name is Kim Christofferson, and I am the owner of Kimberbell. And you know, we are here tonight to have some fun. How many of you want to have some fun, to relax, to laugh, to just play with fabric, right? If you want to do that, like all these guys do, then give us a thumbs up. We are live on YouTube right now, hopefully on Facebook. We're trying to get that link to work. Um, if you are over on YouTube, then you're probably seeing this live. If you're on Facebook, we might be sending you to YouTube. I don't know what's going on. That's what live is all about, right? But uh, tonight, wherever you are and wherever part of the, whatever part of the world you're in, uh, we hope that you'll stay with us for the next little bit and have some fun. Of course, this is anticipation of, well, actually, it's already here. It is in a quilt shop near you or your favorite quilt shop online. This is about the Emma's collage pillows, collage pillows. And, you know, this is a new technique um, in the machine embroidery world. It's been around for a long time in the quilting world. Um, and it's something that I have always just gravitated to because there are so many fun things you can do with fabric. And so, um, you know, this whole idea that you could collage these designs with, with little itty bitty pieces of fabric might seem a little overwhelming and daunting to you, but we wanna show you that it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, it's even easier on the embroidery machine. So Kimberbell just launched this brand new CD, this new technique. We are so excited to share it with you. And so if you've always wondered, uh, you know, how does this work and how easy is it really? Uh, we thought it would be fun to, to share a little bit about that uh, with you tonight. So if you have questions, remember this is live. And so I'm happy to help answer any questions you have. I've got my friend Maddie over here and she is going to be monitoring uh, the Facebook page and letting me know what questions you have. I've even got my little phone here and I will try to monitor as much as I can. And I've got Jamie over here and she's monitoring YouTube. So let us, uh, you know, be, uh, be your friend tonight in answering any and all questions you have. And then there's this other side of what tonight is all about beyond just fabric. How many of us love food, right? Whoa, yes. And of course, the big thing now is the charcuterie, the charcuterie board. Some of you might know it as the grazing board. I think it's kind of like Lunchables on steroids, if you will, right? Um, if you love all of the beautiful boards that are out there, and I'll tell you, all you have to do is, you know, put it in Google or Pinterest, and you're going to see some amazing food boards. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of that tonight with my friends back over over here and uh, they're going to share some um, fun ideas right on how to put together a charcuterie board now you may be saying to yourself okay what is the connection between charcuterie and collage quilting what well there's a whole lot so uh, join with me if you are visiting from um, you know your own sewing room your home your dining room table or you might be at your favorite quilt shop right now shout out to all those shops who are putting on together these events tonight in conjunction with this uh, they are out there doing this as well let's just have some fun shall we all right so let's go ahead and get started I'm going to show you first what we're going to be making tonight and what these ladies my friends over here come on over here. Woohoo! They're all on different machines and they are ready to stitch out these designs and you'll be meeting uh, them up close and personal here in just a moment. Um, but anyway, this, these are some examples of some of the pillows that you can make with the, uh, the Emma's collage pillows that just came out from Kimberbell. Beautiful, right? Gorgeous, gorgeous, uh, what I might call Pinterest worthy pillows for your home. This home decor is like nothing else. And I'll tell you what, you could have the same fabrics and give it to 10 different people and they're all going to look so different because of the collage technique. And that's what makes it so much fun. So here's a floral design. Here's another design on that CD. It's, it says home. Look at that. All of those fabrics on there are probably 
10, 12 different uh, pieces of yellow fabric. And then our amazing uh, uh, digitizers here at Kimberbell then put these beautiful leaf motifs on this one uh, to give it some extra detail. And isn't that beautiful? So we're going to be talking about how you do that tonight. And um, of course, then have a little bit of food with that too, right? And then we've got this one, this design that says, bless this nest. But uh, you know, whether you do this with a collage quilting, like you saw in these ones, or even just a regular solid applique piece, like we did here, you, you can't go wrong with this, okay? You cannot go wrong. I'm gonna check real quick what I'm seeing here on YouTube and Facebook. Do we have any questions so far, Jamie, or um, any questions? No? Okay. So are we on Facebook yet? Are we good there? Not quite. We started on Facebook. Okay, okay. All right, so hang tight if you're still waiting. All right, so... Um, that is what we're going to do tonight. Now, these, these designs come in multiple sizes. So look at how beautiful, again, these images are. Here we've got the bird's nest, bless this nest, on this, this big pillow. But then, you, as you saw here, we put it small in a corner. So whether you have a 5x7 hoop, a 6x10, an 8x12, or a 9x14, you can do all of those sizes um, on these projects, all right? Now, I'm going to talk about these pillow blanks a little bit later. But first, I want you to meet the ladies who are going to try their hand for the very first time, mind you, with you guys tonight. They're a little nervous, but this is no contest. This is all about having fun with fabric. And so let's go ahead and meet Jenny, Janessa, and Joy. Hey, <laughs> Hi, ladies. How are you feeling? Great. Are, are you, you going to be making something, something for your, your homes? homes? What, what, what do you have in mind? Doing, doing it. Doing it. <laughs> are you nervous? I'm yeah. excited to do it. I mean, yeah. I've always thought these were so pretty. And I, I have, have plenty of places in the house that I could go. Yeah. My daughter just redecorated her room. Uh huh. So I'm thinking maybe that would be perfect for it. Yeah. yeah they they each started out with a lumbar size pillow cover blank right from Kimberbell. And so that's what they're going to be doing it on these beautiful navy blue blanks. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about, bit more about what makes those so awesome here in a minute. But Janessa, where are you going to put yours? Probably use it in my house too. Um, my decor style is like kind of eclectic. So okay. Collage works really good with that because it's yes. kind of like a mishmash and but it looks fun and cool at the end. So. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. I love that. I'd love to see your eclectic style there. I bet it's awesome. Janessa is quite the, the designer um, here at Kimberbell too. So I can only imagine what your house looks like. Okay, Joy, what are you thinking? I am going to make it as a gift. So I'm going to be working outside my color, but thinking of someone. Here, let me get you the mic. Right. Oh, I get to speak on the mic. Yes. <laughs> I'm making it as a gift. So I'm going to kind of step outside of the traditional color that I like but I have someone in mind to give it to and Ooh. you know Kimberbell blanks and, and our embroidery projects that's what most of us do with them right we love to gift so yeah okay I love it yeah Joy I've known Joy for many many a year uh, years and uh, she is more like more of a subtle traditional style quilter so this is a little bit out of your comfort zone it's gonna be a little wild, yeah I'm excited though Good, 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 good. Okay, so I'm going to help you guys learn how to do this because I know this is your first time. Oh, yes. So we're going to get to that in just a minute. But before we do, I want to introduce you to my other friends over here. Hi, guys. They're, they got the, the real fun part, which is the food, right? <laughs> okay, so we've got Brielle. How are you doing? Hello. Good. <laughs> Happy to be here with the food. <laughs> I have not been, you know, tasting. No, before. not at all. I'm sure. And so, yeah, and Brielle's got a little baby on board. <laughs> so that, that little boy will be very happy tonight, too. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I can't wait to see what you create for sure. Okay. Jazzy J. I like to call her Jazzy J. Her name is Jasmine, and she's awesome here. She's another graphic designer here at Kimberbell. And Jasmine, how are you feeling about this grazing board tonight? Well, there's cheese, so I'm feeling great. <laughs> All good. Yeah, you can't go wrong with cheese, right? Yeah, you can. 
I was just telling Aaron earlier that you can never have enough cheese. Mm -hmm. So true. <laughs> so true. I love it. Yeah. Love them cheesers. Okay. And then we've got Aaron, and she's one of our product managers here. Aaron, tell us uh, about how you're feeling about beans tonight. Oh, you're already chopping. I, I did. I got yeah. a jump start. <laughs> <laughs> I'm That's, <very> okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So, so fun. Crunchy, yeah, creamy, Ooh, salty, cheesy, sweet. sweet. Oh yeah, my gosh, looking forward to all that. the things. You know, that's a beautiful thing about charcuterie boards, right? Is there's no right or wrong way to do them, it's kind of like chop it up and dump it, and it'll look beautiful, kind of like a charcuterie or kind of like collage quilting exactly. in a way. You'll exactly. see, because what's cool again, just like fabric. We're looking at all these foods and they're all so different, right? And we wonder how is this ever gonna to go together? And then by the time we're done with it, how these guys have arranged the food is much like what happens when you do collage quilting. You can start with the same fabrics, but depending on where you place them, it's gonna look different than your neighbor. So again, this is not a contest tonight. If you've ever been with us for Stitched, you know it gets pretty heated, right? We're we're all friends here. We're going to just have a casual night. And I would love to, you know, give you the challenge out there that if you are inspired after tonight of doing, you know, the whole charcuterie and collage quilting, wouldn't this be fun for a girl's night out to get together or with family and friends, neighbors, and host your own <laughs> event, something like this? That would be cool, right? And of course you can't go wrong with eating. All right, so go ahead and get started on your boards. They've got the vegetables, they've got the meats, they've got the fruits, and of course the cheese, as Jasmine said. Um, and then you guys come on over here. Joy, Janessa, Jenny, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial to you guys and you guys out there on how this works, all right? So tonight they are starting out with a lumbar size pillow. Now let me show you here what that looks like. Okay, this is a new, here I'm gonna have you hold this. This, these are new pillow cover blanks from Kimberbell. And we have a 12 by 18 inch size here um, that you guys are using tonight, right? And then we also have the 18 by 18 inch uh, size, but we also not only have the pillow cover blanks, but we also have the inserts that go into them. So those pillow forms that you've been looking for, they're now available at your favorite quilt shop. So check that out. So you're gonna be starting with a blank. Now, this is kind of the look they're going after kind of, I say, because it's the design, but it depends really on what colors you're choosing, right? And we have a whole array of Kimberbell fabrics, of course, um, for you guys to choose from tonight. And so what I want you to do is think first, what color scheme are you going to go with? Um, you know, yeah, so many choices. And really, you don't have to think of a uh, leaf as always being green. I mean, gr leaves could be all kinds of colors, right? So really think outside the box, uh, go beyond your comfort zone maybe okay. in coloring and choose fabrics. Now, how many of you, give me a raise of hand, a thumbs up, me too, whatever, all those things. Tell me, do you have fabric stashes in your homes? Do you, do you have fabric oh, scraps? Yeah. <laughs> I can't get rid of fabric, right? I, like even the smallest of pieces, I'm like, oh, I don't wanna throw that in the trash. Well, it's your lucky day, <laughs> right? Because you can use so many fabric scraps with this and now you're gonna be collecting them all. Now, as you can see on here, this is made on an 18 by 18 inch pillow, but don't let that you know, sway you because again, all of these designs are in different sizes and we will walk you through every single step of uh, putting this together, no matter if you are putting it on one of our pillow cover blanks or really anything else, because there's so many things you can do with this, right? Now, the thing that sets our pillow cover blanks from anything else that's out there is they have the open side seams, guys. And so that means that when you get your blank, it will lay open flat. It has an invisible zipper already sewn in 
we which we love, right, Jenny? I have no idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know wonderful. what? You're not alone. <laughs> so, and here's the beautiful thing too. They're already pre-quilted. So I love that too. And each blank has a different background quilting design to it. So anyway, check those out um, at Kimberbell. Uh, dot com, your favorite quilt shop, and, and see what we have to offer uh, through shops on these pillow cover blanks. This makes it easy so that all you have to do is stitch your design on this, uh, lay this flat, stitch your design, and then you just put right sides together at the end, sew up the sides, and you're done. And then put the pillow through the zipper. Put, right? You <laughs> got it. Yes, that, that is key right. right there. Put the pillow through the zipper. All right, so... The first thing you want to do, Joy, come on over here. I know she's prepping her fabric, but I want to give you guys all a quick tutorial on how easy this is to do. You're going to want a few different stabilizers and, of course, that those fabric scraps. So the first stabilizer you're going to want is our Kimberbell Sticky Back Tearaway Stabilizer. Now, you could also use our Sticky Back Wash Away. Either one of them will do. Um, but this is our Tearaway, and uh, this is on a 20-inch roll. Uh, we also have them in 12-inch rolls. But you're going to be using this larger one tonight. You're also going to want a double-sided uh, sticky back fusible web. Now, Kimberbell does not have that in our product line, but um, there are many brands available for that. So look for sticky back, double-sided sticky back the fusible. fusible web. <laughs> Got, say that 10 times fast. So I'm going to give you guys each one of those pieces, and you're going to see how nice this is. Uh, here in just a moment. Okay. Now, uh, once you have that, the other stabilizer that would be really good to have, and I'm going to go over here to our stabilizer group, is the wash away. So this is, let me show you the packaging here. This is a washy, wash away topper. Okay. This is not to be confused, my friends, with stabilizer that you wash away. This is actually a topping that goes on top of your cut pieces of fabric before you embroider. And you'll see why that works here in a minute. Now, if you took the packaging off, of course, we've got our slap bands to keep it all straight. So you'll want that. In fact, I'll just keep this out here uh, for you guys to take here in just a moment. All right. So have you thought about what colors you're looking for? just decide between cream and yellow and use your mic when you're or oh, yeah yeah sorry. we want to decide. we want to hear you jenny <laughs> well, i am trying to decide between yeah. creams or yellows i think i'm gonna go okay you could do a combination of both maybe i should yeah because we've got the three different flowers here and i think tonight we'll just get to one side of your pillow okay. but you know you don't have to do them all the same you could okay. do a cream one That's you could is. do a yellow one and another pink one or cream one or whatever you want. Okay. Your heart's desire, Jenny. All right. <laughs> I will look at my heart. Okay. <laughs> find a desire and then I will choose it. Hey, hey, speaking of heart, you that, that was a good segue because oh. you know what? what? In the directions, you also oh. have oh, a yeah. little heart uh, sample that we want you to practice with before you get started into the big flower. So if you feel come if you, it would make you feel better <laughs> to do that heart first, you can do that. The files are included um, on the CD. All right. So, Joy, what are you thinking for colors? Okay. I'm stepping outside, but I think I'm going to mix the orange and the corals and the bright yellow Ooh. and just see if I can make the, you know, really pretty yeah. bright flower. Okay. Love it. Okay. Janessa, what are you thinking? I'm thinking? I will do the orange and the greens just because I think it's Ooh. nice warm colors, but again, they're kind of just more interesting together. So, we'll see hey. what that looks like. <laughs> oh! I can't wait to see what you guys do. Are you super excited about this? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So cool. I'm going to get you started and then I'm going to go over here and talk food here in just a moment. So the first thing we want to do, let's see, do I have some scissors? I'm going to grab some scissors over here real quick. Okay. You'll definitely want some scissors with you. Okay. And you're just going to cut this uh, into to squares to make it easy. You know, of course, you can, there's no rhyme or reason here is what I like to say. Now, 
if I'm looking at, say, for example, I want to do my flowers in, I want to do like all pinks and corals, okay? I'm going to look at this stack. And again, you can see that we just, there's nothing that really matches perfectly. It's just that we have all the different shades, right? So I have like the red background here with a coral on top, but then look how pretty that is next to it with the coral background and the red on top. Or look at this one, it's just coral with some white, and then this one is coral with red. So definitely those would go together, but don't feel like you have to have everything coordinate because that's the beauty of this. Even having different tones of colors, like this is a definitely a different tone than this coral. This is definitely more on the pink side, but it's still going to work to give your floral, your flower some dimension. And then of course you can add some, uh, some highlights there with some whites. So you just choose whatever fabric you want. I'm just going to choose one of these here. And then I'm going to take, oh, here's my um, double, <laughs> double sided sticky fusible web. <laughs> All right. And the first thing you want to do is just peel that off. Okay. So it reveals a, like a sticker. Okay. And then I'm going to place that on the back of my fabric scrap. Okay. Right now it's pretty. I'm just, I'm going to place it down on a, you know, a flat surface and give it a good finger press. Okay. Now, once I've done that, you can sometimes peel this up and that's all you needed to do. And it, the, the sticker back reveal is now on the side of the fabric. It's not sticky yet. So this is a good way to show you that it doesn't always work just by finger pressing. Initially, try the finger pressing because this type of uh, product can do that. But if you're having problems when you peel it away and you don't see the sticker on this, then no problem to it. And do we have an iron already plugged in? Okay, come over here with me. I'm gonna take this and just for a few seconds, give it a little pressing, okay? I'm gonna cool that baby down. Then I know for sure that sticky back is on there. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel this up and you see oh, now ooh, there's yeah, a sticker. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. So right. now there's a sticker. Go ahead and feel that. Yep. And you know it's there. Okay. Oh, you know what? Actually, we're going to back up for just a minute. Do, 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 rewind. Do, 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 do. <laughs> this is good that you're seeing me in real time, right? Because right. you probably are going to do this at home too. I'm going to actually place that back on there. <laughs> you know what? We're going to scrap it and we're going to start again because <laughs> this is the beauty of live, my friends. Okay, try that again. I'm rewinding do, 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 back over here. <laughs> How many of you can relate out there? Tell me I'm not alone. All right, I'm going to place that on there. And oh no, I'm gonna peel it first. Peel you guys, it. you guys need to, you know, keep we me did. on track, we right? Need you totally we needed. I peeled it. I placed it. Press it. That's oh, <laughs> okay. Press. press. I'm going to take an iron to it just for a Place. few seconds. Press. <laughs> now here's where Kim went wrong. I actually peeled this all the way off, but really what, what I want to do, do is it, just it, make sure, just do a corner so that I know that's on yes. there, and we know it's on there now. Yeah, you got me. Yeah. Will you grab me my scissors over there? Okay, this is where it's easier to cut your pieces with oh. the paper still on. Now, of course, if I went ahead and peeled that all the way off, no big deal, no sweat. You can still do this with scissors, but it's just gonna be easier if I have paper still on. Okay, now this is where you get to have some fun. Notice I am not doing anything else but going in and out with curves, okay? There is no right or wrong way to do this. In fact, Joy, there you go. There's your first piece. piece. <laughs> that is a great question. Jenny asked, how do you know how big to do this? I would say I would keep it around, uh, it depends on the, how big of a space you're filling. So go ahead and you can take that one. You don't have to use it because you're doing creams and yellows, know, but you, you know. <laughs> Jenny's heart is still a flutter. <laughs> 
Okay. Do you notice how all three of those pieces are so different? Mm -hmm. And some could be maybe an inch wide to answer your question, Jenny. Some could be like a half an inch. Some could be even larger than that, two inches. It really doesn't matter. But I will tell you this. When you go to place it on your pillow, um, the very first step they're going to do is stitch an outline of their flower. That's the, the first step, okay? It's going to stitch that placement outline. If you're an embroiderer, you know what I'm talking about here, right? So you want to make sure that whatever you cover, you're going to cover the whole area with all these little itty bitty pieces of fabric, right? But you want it to extend beyond the placement line by about a half of an inch. Because when you go to cut away later, like a regular applique, you just have that much more to hold on to. Oh, yeah. okay. So let's, has anyone stitched out their outline of their flower yet? No, no yeah. problem. Okay. I you, need to do my crosshair. Oh, okay. No biggie. You're gonna stitch out your outline of your flower. Well, you're gonna do your crosshair yeah. because that's gonna show her where to place it on her pillow. Right. So we'll get there. But if you were just doing this at home, like on a towel or something, then you wouldn't have to worry about that crosshair. Because you're positioning it just right on the pillow, then you're gonna stitch out your crosshair, like you said. Then when you go to stitch out your flower, it is the outline, and you're just going to start layering pieces, one on top of the other, um, overlapping by quarter of an inch and a half an inch. It really doesn't matter. But just make sure that you're out, your pieces that are along the perimeter of your flower are larger than the area that needs to be covered. Does that make sense? Yeah, you know, don't definitely don't get out a, a ruler and measure this. It really is just eyeballing it. Just have fun. So you're going to cut a lot of these little pieces. In fact, I'm thinking I love collage so much that I want to start, you know, when I'm watching a movie and I'm looking for things to to do. Do you, are you guys like that? Yes. Are you guys like that? Oh yeah, I kind of sit and watch. I know. <laughs> Cut out your collage pieces, right? And then back them according to color. Ooh, and then you'll always have, have these ready to go. go. Okay. okay, so, so I'm, I'm going to have you go ahead and get started with the crosshair and, and that outline. Pick, pick your, your fabrics. fabrics iron your fusible the way it should be done. Okay. And then I'll come and meet with you in just a minute. Okay. Because I'm ready to talk food. Okay. <laughs> yes, let's talk food. <laughs> In the meantime, I do want to tell you that we have giveaways tonight. So stay with us because by liking, sharing, commenting on this video, whether it's on Facebook or YouTube, then you're going to uh, be entered to win. Uh, three people are going to win a prize package. Are you ready to hear what you get? You're going to get uh, one of our our new, brand new Kimberbell pillow blanks. Okay, isn't that beautiful? I love this orange peel quilting that you see on here. Again, that's already done. We've got this blue mist linen that has this like chevron looking pattern here. Um, gorgeous. And then, of course, our navy blue that they're working on tonight is a lumbar pillow. And it's got this plaid quilting going across it. Someone, three of you are going to win these pillows uh, sets. You're going to also receive the inserts for them. So the pillow forms come over here. I'm going to show you what they are so that you can find them in your favorite quilt shop. This is what you're looking for. Okay. This is the pillow insert. Now this is a 12 by 18. This does not look like a 12 by 18, but guess what? It's because it's vacuum sealed in there. And and when you pop this baby open, just like a can of biscuits, it's going to grow. All right. So uh, you'll have a 12 by 18 inch form. Someone's going to get an 18 by 18 inch form. Again, doesn't look like one right now, but it will when you pop this open. And then you're also going to receive your choice of blanks. Okay. These are the uh, pillow cover blanks. And then, of course, we've got the navy one, too. You're also going to receive a bundle of Kimberbell fabric to get you started, some fat quarters to get you started with collage quilting. And, oh, you got to have the sticky back stabilizer, the sticky back tearaway stabilizer. We're going to send you a roll of that and a, a roll of the wash away topper. 
three people are going to win that. So make a comment, like, share, whatever you want to do to, to tell your friends about this and uh, let us know what you think. Um, if you have questions, those are also entered into this uh, giveaway. And tomorrow we will post the three winners. Okay. All right. Now let's talk charcuterie. Come on over here. Doo, doo, doo. I'm going to grab my phone so that if I see anything coming up, I can also help answer here. All right. How's it going, guys? So good. So good. Let me grab a mic for you. All right. We want to make sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll, I'll stick it, shove it in your face, Jasmine. Okay. So, wow. Okay, Brielle. Something's crazy going on here. What do you well, <laughs> oh, okay. So this is a salami rose. Aaron and I were actually on the same wavelength tonight. So we both have a salami rose here. No, 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 no. Okay. Do we have any salami left? Okay. So you basically just need a little glass, some sort of rim. Um, I have this small Coca-Cola glass at home that I like to use. It's okay. the right size. Okay. Anyway, you just take your pieces of salami and you kind of fold them in half over the rim of your glass here. And you just keep going like this all the way around. You might have to kind of keep them in place. Down. No, it nope. It just kind of lays over the rim. Okay. And eventually, you know, it's going to get so full where you can't really lay any more in there. You have to go a few times around, right? So you did overlap them just a little bit. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um. So then I've got one layer down, so I just kind of keep going with my second and third. Might take you three or four layers, but once you've got that there, then what you'll do is you'll flip her over like that. <gasps> what? Isn't that cool? Ah, It'll be a lot more full, right? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! The, so the angels are singing. It's I so cannot easy. wait to try this. It's so fun. Did you get a close-up of this? Look, like get the camera going face down on that baby. Look at that. It's so fun. So then when you're done, if you have any, you know, gaps in here, I just folded a couple pieces in half and filled in a little bit of space and a couple things like that just to fill it in a little bit. Oh my so gosh. It's I'm that dying. easy. I'm so dying. easy. That <laughs> looks so hard. And you did it she did it it's in like so 10 fast. seconds. Yeah. It's so you're gonna wow well the party with that one right there. Oh my gosh. Okay. And then what did you do with this mozzarella? Okay. So this is just tomato fresh mozzarella. And I just um, have a favorite Italian dressing that I just kind of drizzled on the top here. Ooh. I put some toothpicks here. Mm -hmm. oh, what is it? I think it's called like Riglioni's. Riglioni's. Something okay. like that. Okay. It's a Utah uh, based salad dressing actually okay really good it smells delicious mm -hmm. so then i just have toothpicks here to serve that so i'm just kind of filling in with space that i have left now I, i'm not quite sure how this is gonna <laughs> end I up am I'm, so exactly i'm hoping i'll have some room for some veggies here if not Don't there's a lovely spread here there you go. Mm -hmm. good cheese yes. all right okay <laughs> What you got going on, cheese? Jasmine? <laughs> Jasmine's all about the cheese, as we know. What is this? That is a fig, honey fig spread. Ooh. Apparently, Aaron and I were on the same page there, and we have honey, honey fig, fig spread. Ooh, would you put it like on crackers or what? Yes, you can mix mm. like crackers and like goat cheese is super good with sweet spreads. So, oh, you're mixing a mm -hmm, little bit of sweet mm -hmm, and savory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love it. And I'm adding my cute little spoons. Oh. Oh, They're just mini. so good. Everything's cute mm -hmm. or little, right? Oh, yes, and you can just get them at a party store and just putting those in here for everyone to do, you know, what they want. No longer do you just lay down salami. Mm -mm. You, you folded this up. Mm -hmm. So much like her rose where mm -hmm. it's just like a beautiful presentation, tell us what you did with this folded salami or the pros prosciutto. Is that what you prosciutto? call it? Prosciutto. Prosciutto. Um, yeah. I just kind of wave it a little bit. Yeah. And then with the salami, well, I fold it. Show our friends because oh, that, okay. that's um, waving okay. it. It's I, don't not... have, I don't have extra, so I okay. will just peel it. But okay. I just kind of take the piece of prosciutto. Okay. And then you'll just wave it a little bit and put it on there. So it's and then it like looks pretty. Pinching it and then like mm -hmm. putting it in the empty spaces. Yes, there's not really like a specific way you have to do it. Should I show it? Here <laughs> we go. Oh, I'm going to turn this around so mm -hmm. you can see it better. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? 
So again, you know, back in the day before <laughs> pre charcuterie, uh-huh. you know, if lunchable I had, time, lunchable time. Okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would just lay it on a platter. Mm-hmm. Here, have at it. But this is such a beautiful presentation, mm-hmm. and you didn't have to cook anything. No, I didn't have to cook <laughs> anything. I just had to touch everything a little mm-hmm. bit. Good. Thank goodness we all washed our hands. Yeah. yeah? <laughs> I'm loving the grapes, the berries, the cherries. It's mm-hmm. just a beautiful color scheme you've got going on. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! And then we got some crackers. Okay. And almost done. Just got to fill in a couple empty spaces. So, so it, I was like going to ask you, Jess, is that your goal is to fill all the emptiness, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. empty spaces? Okay. Yep. See that? There we go. I love that. So you're just going to fill it with what? Maybe some crackers? I haven't totally decided yet. I think my crackers are going to stay on the side. Okay. Um, But I also am going to do a little charcuterie in a cup. So that's kind of what I've started. Charcuterie in a cup? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. Because you can never have too much. (laughs) Okay. So once I I get all of that together, I'll know a little bit more of what I'm doing. Oh, can't wait to come back and see it. All right. Let's head over to Erin, see what she's working on. Aaron, ah, you double stacked the charcuterie know, board. I, know. I like that, but little, it get, right? tell us why. Well, I just think that it's more fun when you get to see things kind of spread out, cascading, yes. if you Ooh, will, cascading. down the board. I hear you on yes, that. I hear yes. you. I love dimension, yes. as you know. Uh-huh. Not only on charcuterie boards, but yes, on quilts, as you know. Um, <laughs> but I love that extra dimension and the, the layering that that provides by having that extra um, mm-hmm. board there. Yeah, super fun. And you even added the glass yeah i love that yeah. i'll take one of those yeah they're, they're tasty <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, okay i fun. probably should not crunch into the microphone no one wants to hear that right mm-hmm. okay so i'm going to toss that aside because no one wants to hear kim crunch but look and the peaches going on yeah. and a fan. like this nectarines my favorite Ooh. fruit so it had to be on there somewhere i love know? it and we gotta get I need more vegetables and nuts okay. and, and, and fruit. That's the plan at this point. But I'm running out of space. Tell me what cheese this is. This is this, this is like a, a brie slash camembert Ooh. mix. I was at the cheese counter for a while today. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh-huh. It was a lot of fun. The lady there was really happy to help me. <laughs> I'm sure. But this is going to be that really creamy, rich cheese. So if you put it on a cracker with a little bit of the any of the meats and then a little bit of the fig jam, you get what? the creamy, salty, sweet. <laughs> Well, yeah. I'm going to have to invite uh, Janessa join Ginny. Does that sound good? Oh, creamy, yeah. creamy, salty, sweet all mixture together. all together. Yeah. That's heaven in the mouth, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Nice. I love it. Okay. Well, I hope you guys were inspired. Uh, you guys keep going because, wow, that looks amazing. I'm, let's go ahead and check in over here and okay. see how it's going. How's your... Uh, fabric stuff going well i think my heart told me to (laughs) do like some reds and pinks and yellows okay bright happy yes dare i say springy yes your daughter will love it yeah i hope so so is is yours working just to press it or are you having Uh, to take it to an iron iron, okay i didn't want to block your charcuterie oh okay (laughs) okay so she's just prepping right now and you've got your um your pillow hooped. Yeah, it looks like it. Did I do it right? <laughs> well, no, yes. Me. <laughs> Please no. correct me if you need to. It looks great. It looks great. And what I love is that she made it really simple by just placing it on top of the stabilizer. That's why we love that sticky back yep. um, instead of having to hoop it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Made much, it much simple. easier. Okay. Sure. Awesome. I can't wait to see the next step. Thanks. So you keep going there. Uh, we've got Joy over here. You're adding some more I'm fabrics. Doing yellow. What are your thoughts? Um, tell, well, tell the camera. What are my thoughts? <laughs> tell all I'm the hundreds of people with watching. Orange, which is Kim's favorite color. Love it. It is, and uh, you know, and I I do love it, but I don't normally make orange themes. So <laughs> I love the flowers outside of my neighbor's house. Though are all orange and very very beautiful. The big puff flowers, yeah. so I'm that's what it's reminding me of. Ooh. So I think I need some hints of yellow, but I'm wondering okay. if that's a little too dark. Okay. So, I don't know. I could spend hours choosing fabric. Okay. Now hours. here's another thing you have right. to know about my friend Joy. Yes. 
I could still be here <laughs> doing this when <laughs> the <laughs> night is all over, right? <laughs> How many years have we been friends? A and I know time. that Joy might be an overthinker. Maybe. Just a little bit. Okay. Little turn out so pretty. So this is when you throw <laughs> caution to the wind and you just go with the flow, okay. Joy. I'm you can do this, right? One of every yellow yeah. then and one of every orange. <laughs> yeah. You cannot overthink this because if you try too hard to place it in the exact spot, you're, you're going to get frustrated. Okay. So that's, trust the, that's process. trust the process. This is our challenge to every okay. one of you out there who's trying this with us I'm is just pull the all the things. scraps right? Yes. And just cut, cut, cut away. Okay. And then them layer them. Should I put a, a piece of maybe? Ooh. Okay. I'll do that. And oh my I'm gosh, Joy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I did start the phrase here at Kimberbell, who cares how long cute takes. She did. Yeah. Because yeah. who yeah. really cares? Who cares how long cute takes? It could take five years. But I do want to <laughs> eat. But we do have charcuterie tonight. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And they only have an hour of time. So. Yeah. You keep going, girl. Okay, let's go over and see what Janessa's doing. Janessa, how's it going? There you go. Tell us what you're doing. I'm just prepping all my colors. I'm not sure if this is going to look good, but we're just going to go for it. I Janessa, think that's what will be good. <laughs> Janessa, I love that you said that because I think a lot of people would agree with you. They're, yes. they're going to look at this. They're going to overthink it like joy. <laughs> and they're going to say to themselves just what you said. I'm not sure this is going to look mm -hmm. good. But I promise you, yes. <laughs> it's going to look yes. so I think good. I will, yep. Yeah. Now, also, ladies, don't feel like you have to get all your fabrics done right now for all three flowers. Just focus on one flower at a time, and, and, and we'll lay that piece down, okay? Because I want, you, I want us to go ahead and get started on the outline of the first flower so that I can then show you the next step of layering. How's that? So should we go to that point? Yes. Okay, awesome. But you're going with a pink orange yeah. scheme. Warm colors. Warm colors. I love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, while we're while we're waiting for them to get that to that next step, let's go ahead and find out. Maddie, do we have any questions? I'm gonna let's let's check out Maddie over here. I'm gonna I'm gonna get behind Maddie. Everyone's gotta see cute Maddie here. Okay, Maddie, what what's going on here? Yeah. I know we're just having fun. Lots of comments about the charcuterie boards. Oh really? Really? Fun. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Are they loving the the techniques these ladies share? They are loving it. Yeah. We want to see what all of you guys do when you put them together. Mm -hmm. So super fun. We do. Yeah. Maddie is one of our amazing uh, ladies here on the marketing team. She is most likely the one that's answering you on social <laughs> media with a smile all the time. Always willing to help answer your questions there as well, of course, on here. So um, let her know if you have questions yeah. because we want to help answer them. So there were no questions or just comments? Just lots of fun comments. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Maddie. All right. All right. Okay. What, what do we have going on here? Oh, we've got our director <laughs> in, in progress right here. Her name is Stacy. Stacy, can I interview you? Uh, sure. <laughs> Let me just turn on my mic, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stacy yeah, so. is also on our marketing team. Creative genius, as I like to say. If you have seen the the musical that we did for Clear Blue Tiles, well, we have two famous people from that musical in here. <laughs> you might have recognized Jenny. Yeah, Jenny, she's a real <laughs> star. Song out of my head. That's right. <laughs> Maybe if we're really nice, well, we can ask Jenny to give us a, an extra rendition of it tonight, right, Jenny? Uh, okay, awesome. But Stacy directed that. So, Stacy, tell us uh, a little bit about what you're doing behind the camera. Um, right now, I'm monitoring all the audio and I'm okay. doing, uh, sorry, I can hear myself. <laughs> Uh, I'm making sure switching the cameras off and everything. So I'm uh -huh. just pushing a lot of buttons. Okay. Pretty much. That's it. what you do best, right? Yeah. That's, that's my old job. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Thanks, Stacy. She's awesome. She's awesome. Well, you're good. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Get them. So someone asked if um, you don't have to hoot the blank, you can float it. Yes, you can float it. If you are using the sticky back stabilizer, then you just have to float it. Yep. Perfect. And then the other one was, how does the outline of the flower work if they're using sticky back? 
Okay, so the out you'll you'll see here in just a minute. In fact, that's a great question, a great time to go back over here because I'm I hear a machine going, and I think the first step has been started to be stitched. So let's go ahead. Can I go this way over here? Okay, we're good. Okay, we've also got our behind the, the scenes uh, camera guys here, Jake and Andrew. Big shout out to you guys. Can you turn the camera on yourselves? Can you? Aha! There's Andrew! <laughs> Jake? Okay, well, we're going to get Jake here in just a minute. Where, where's a picture? Of, let's, let's grab a cute pic of Jake. There we go. Hey! We can thank them for getting all these great shots. Okay, guys. Oh, oh, the first step, I was wrong. The first step is actually the additional yes. flower motif. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, if we review our instructions. Yes, <laughs> according to instructions, <laughs> yes. <laughs> step one, hey, this is a perfect time to talk yes. about how good our instructions are, right? <laughs> right here, we've got the machine step and that matches the machine step on course your machine so this is the mum flower detail and I love that because this goes beyond the applique portion this is just an extra flower design that really just makes it the whole thing so beautiful so you're first going to do that flower then you're going to do the wish flower so you're about to do that it looks like she's starting that with her thread and then the outline of the flower. So when you get to the outline of the flower, will you holler yes, to me and let me know? Because okay. then I can do a, a quick little tutorial with you guys on how to do that. I'm seeing a really cool idea over here. Joy, what are you doing? I love what I'm seeing. Well, tell, tell everyone here what right. you did. I took all those square pieces and I just laid them on that whole sheet of sticky back fusible, the That's double brilliant. sticky fusible. And then I ironed them all at once. So they're all ironed there. So I can use every bit of this fabric. You mentioned that is so smart. cutting out while I was watching TV. And I yes. thought that won't be fun to cut. So now I can get from all of these scraps. So Great idea. Anyway, I love you. that. That is so smart. <laughs> okay, you're doing your wish flower right now. Yes. Let's take a closer look at that. Isn't that so pretty? It's very pretty. Oh, I love and I it. It actually is this light yellow color, but yeah. against the navy blue, it's just so pretty. Oh, it's and gorgeous. And I'm actually loving this whole color combination together yeah. since it's all laid out here. So yeah. this oh, is going to be fun. Awesome. Awesome. So okay, keep going. All right. Uh, let's check in with Jenny over here. Okay, because I see that Jenny just finished. 15 minutes left. Okay, so we're good. Yeah, so you get going with that flower, guys. Um, so, Jenny, let's go ahead. Let's take a look. Is it this camera here? We're going to get a closer outline, look. Right? Yes. Okay. So, she's about to stitch the outline of the flower. Yes. And so, let's go ahead and do that. And then I can show all of you guys how to layer this. Okay. okay. So, this is the first flower that's going to stitch out. And this is what we would call a placement outline. And just like in regular applique, um, we would stitch this out. And then normally what we would do is take a, a piece of fabric, a whole piece of fabric, and lay it over the top. But we're going to do that a little bit differently with this one. So let's now before you do that, I'm going to actually have you remove this from the machine. And if you guys will just kind of keep a close eye. Yeah. <laughs> Cutting in round shapes. Ooh, that's a good Earth question, shapes. Joy. You know, the purpose of it is um, that it just makes the whole design flow. Here, I'm going to have right. you hold that. Uh, Joy asked a great question. She said, what is the purpose <clears throat> of cutting in like round shapes? And the, the reason why we do that is because a few. We want the, the look of the flower to flow. If we had sharp edges, like long edges, then you're definitely going to see kind of like where it begins and where it ends instead of a nice soft flow. So that would be why. But also when it comes to layering, it's going to help. So do you have some p pieces already cut? Yeah, I think I made the paper on some of Okay, perfect. So Jenny, bring over your, your pieces. And as you can see here, she's got all different shapes and colors and you name it all right and she may look at this and go i i just don't think this is gonna work <laughs> i just 
something. You know, <laughs> she may be that. And I'm saying, yes, it can. I promise you. So this is where it gets fun. So you're going to peel off that paper again and now again you have that sticker right so that means it's it can be repositionable now remember when i said you want to make sure that you cover the whole area but you extend even beyond the line yeah. that's when this would come into play so right now i don't want to line this up see if i try to line this up yeah. then i'm going to have you know that outside edge showing and on this particular one I don't want it to now it might work for other areas and you're going to have some other extra outline stitches but for right now for this placement line I'm just going to cover up the whole area okay no rhyme or reason you're just going to cover it then I'm going to take another piece can I just go here yeah yeah absolutely and just peel away and now I can place it this way. I could place it this way. It really doesn't matter. But notice again, if I were to be able to see through that fabric, that stitch line is actually about right there. That's okay because we're going to do a top stitch or a, what we call a tack down stitch in a minute. And that will um, be cut away later to be that same shape. Okay. So let's keep placing these all over. Oh, I love how you have that pop of yellow there. Ooh, I love it. Now, another reason why, oh, see, I love this because if I go, mm, I don't like it there, I can just remove it because it's repositionable and I'm going to place it this way. Okay. So let's keep peeling. Oh, that one was already on there. Yeah. Okay. Now, the reason why you have these, what I might refer to as little fingers, okay, they're, they're the little curves going around is because when you go to layer these one on one, you know, you don't want them side by side. You want them to overlap a little bit, but you may want to go, you know what? I could do this just right on top or look at this. I'm going to place this on top, but I'm going to peel back this layer, tuck this one under and place that just like that. So now you have a little bit of layering going over here, but then this one that was down before is now on top. And that's what I love about this um, so this technique is that it just, oh, so pretty. Okay, there we go. Now I'm done with that, but you might go, you know what, I want a, a little extra something there. I don't want it to be just all that solid color. So go ahead, take some of your next fabric and you could layer it there. And then maybe you're like, oh, I don't know, that's maybe too much yellow, no big deal. Let's, let's cover it up a little bit more this way. And maybe we, you know, peel up some more and tuck it under. So really, this looks a little funky right now. But I promise you, here in just a moment, in, in the few minutes we have left, you're going to love what happens with the next stitch. Awesome. Now, what we could do at this point is actually uh, lay or keep the fabric down and put it in our machine. But if we do that without one extra layer... This is where the Kimberbell wash away topper comes in. You do take the chance of this, if your presser foot coming up or lifting this fabric up because it is just temporarily um, there. So what I like to do is take a piece of our topper. Okay, this will be removed later. Yes, let's use our paper tape. Okay, you don't have to have a big piece like this, but Go ahead and as long as it just covers that whole area, okay, and just tape it down a little bit and then take it to your machine and now it's going to do um, an, a what we would call a, um, oh my gosh, the tack down stitch. See, you know what I'm talking about, Jenny. It's going to do the tack down stitch. Now, I know we only have a few minutes left, but I do want you to see the, this flower come to fruition. So if you don't mind be being with us for a few extra minutes, we're going to go ahead and do this next step on the machine. And uh, there you go. Now, some of you may wonder, like, how do I know what like with shading, uh, first of all, you know, should I put lighter fabric in this area or darker fabric in this area? And again, uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. But if you really want to get technical, here's an idea for you. You could actually um, Google watercolor flowers. 
and really be inspired by watercolor flowers. You're going to see areas of shading on a, a, on a painting, on an actual watercolor painting. So, you know, why not Google it and go, oh, yeah, they put lighter colors back here and then they defined it more with darker colors over in this area. That's a that's an idea that you can use or just throw it all in there. It doesn't matter. OK, so she's going to do her um, her tack down stitch and then I'll show you what to do from there. How's it going over here, guys? Good. OK, you can start peeling and sticking and we will make sure, of course, you know, tonight is just a short amount of time, but we will make sure that we get pictures of all of these afterwards. So um, anyway, because we want you to see how they turned out. Let's go over here while this tack down line is stitching and look at these beautiful boards. Oh my goodness. You guys have to come over here and, sh and show off a little bit. Come on over, Jazzy J. Come on over, Brielle. And where's Aaron? We got, we need Aaron. Okay, Aaron, come on over. You guys, these are gorgeous. And just, okay, again, like those fabrics, they started all with the same ingredients, but look how different they all look, and yet they all look so beautiful. There's not one that I would be like, oh yeah, that's the definite winner, that's the definite winner. They all look amazing, don't they? Oh my gosh, you guys, everyone out there, give these ladies a hand. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. Yeah, can you hear them through the, the screen? Yes. yes, you can hear them. This is amazing. How, how did you feel about doing this tonight? It was so fun. Yeah. I kind of, you know, kind of sort of had an idea of what I was going to try and do. Yeah. Basically the, you know, the rose there and then build around <laughs> it. So, like, so that's well, the only plan you know I have. That's a great, great thing to, to think about, though. Start with a focal point with that yep. rose and then it just builds out from there. Mm -hmm. You can't totally plan this in your head oh, beforehand, no. right? No. Nope. You just have to go with the feelings. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love it. Erin, yep. what do you think about how yours ended up? Well, usually, you know, like that saying less is more, mm -hmm. that did not apply tonight. <laughs> More is more. More is more, and we I, all can appreciate that, right? My goal was to cover that whole board. <laughs> I love it was it. so much fun. I love it. Okay, Jazzy, what do you think? Oh. I'm just ready to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my favorite part is the little charcuterie in a cup. Yeah, look at I that. I could just grab that and be that happy. That's adorable. <laughs> and, and so doable, you know? I mean, Very you don't doable. have to have a big board to nope. do this. Look at that beautiful glass bowl and just a perfect way, you know, shall we? Shall we? That's all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll mm -hmm. take the cheese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm, that cheese. Okay. <laughs> Gotta love the cheese. Yes. All that's right. The, best part. the nuts, the crackers, everything mm -hmm. looks amazing. Let's go over and see this tack down stitch because we just have a few minutes left. Okay. What I want you to do, notice that it has this tack down and it's gonna be like a triple stitch. So it's not going anywhere. And yes, let's now at this point, rip off the topping, okay? And then you wanna take your scissors and cut around this extra fabric, okay? So is there another uh, thing of scissors that I can help her with? No, um, uh, little snips or something. Because I'm going to help you cut on that side. I'm going to okay. cut on this side. We're so we can. About an eighth of an inch or um, an inch or yeah, just right up next to it is totally fine, or about an eighth of an inch. Beyond that, everyone should have an extra fabric cutter in their lives, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> You're spoiling me, Kim. <laughs> Every time I make something, be my snipper. There we go. All right. So we're going to cut around all of that. And um, now you're going to start to see the shape of the outline of the flower. I see why you wanted us to overlap. Yeah. Because you need something to hang on to. While exactly. You're... You want to grip yeah. on. There's enough to grip on to yeah. and then cut the extra away. And this is exactly what you would do if you were appliquing just like a solid piece of fabric too. Okay. All right. And we are almost done. Almost there. 
I don't want to <laughs> cut nothing, you. Nothing like cutting on live, right? <laughs> no, I just don't want to cut you. I don't want to be the person who cuts Kim Kristoff on camera. <laughs> okay. All right. So okay. this is pretty, pretty good. Okay. Now, um, at this point, what we're going to do is actually take it to the ironing board. Okay. We've removed the topper, so we don't need to worry about that. But we want to make sure all these places pieces are nice and flat, that they're not going to come up after you sew on top of them or embroider on top of them. So let's head on over okay, to the ironing station just... in the hoop. Yep, really? okay. yep. Come on over. And we're just going to give it a quick pressing. Stay with us for just a few more minutes here. Now, if you have extra little pieces of the topper um, remaining, you can just take like your Kimberbell tweezers and just pick them out. That's not a problem. Or because it's wash away, a little, uh, a little spritz of water and you're good to go. Okay, now those are nice and flat. Do you, you can see why we would not want to do this earlier, yeah. right? Because <laughs> then you would have extra fabric that are now fused and it, it won't look right. But this is nice and flat. Now is the next step the decorative detail, I believe. Let's hope. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay, good. So if you look at direction step 10A, <laughs> um, it's going, in fact, let me show you as this, as she's putting this back on. Um, here's what we just did. Remember there's the, we changed our thread to whatever color she wanted to have it shown and it stitched that what we would call the tack down line. Go ahead and do your next step, Jenny. And then that's when her and I took it out off of the machine and we trimmed the fabric just close to the stitch line, trimmed all that extra away. Then we went over to the ironing board and we pressed the fabric with the iron until it was all nice and uh, adhered to the project. And now what Jenny is doing is this next step, which is the decorative detail. This is where our digitizers shine. They have put together the most beautiful detail stitches in these collage projects. And so shout out to them. Um, and uh, this is where it just gets really fun. So she will do the Let's decorative do detail. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, so it, I think we, you skipped ahead. Oh, okay. Let's see. So let's quickly go back. Um, oh, there, we, there are. we go. Okay, hold on. Let's make sure we're on the right step. Yeah. So we should oh, be on okay. step seven. This is the beauty of the instructions. Yes, we're on step seven. Now we're on step seven, and that is the decorative details. Yes. Okay. And so there you go. All right. So you'll want to continue this process. Let me just make sure we're good. Okay, you'll want to continue this process until all your flowers are done and then you have this beautiful end result. Let's go ahead and take another closer look now that you've seen the process of how beautiful these are. So you have like the extra mom flower that was the first stitch that that happened on their pillows and then you've got you know then she's I think she's working on the center flower that's probably the one that's work happening right now and then she did well for then she did the wish flower then this one yeah and as you can see when it does that decorative stitch it actually even goes beyond the stitch line to give it a real whimsical look that I just absolutely love and adore. It's gorgeous. This is the type of stuff that is so on trend, so chic, so beautiful for your home, and people will not believe that you made this on the embroidery machine. It's just that awesome. Think about this on things beyond pillows, uh, you know, on a denim jacket. How beautiful would that be? On a shirt, t-shirt, on a tea towel, um, on a table runner. I mean, you, you can, you are all so creative. I'm sure you can think of so many different uh, things that you can do with them. As we end tonight, I want to remind you that if you like, share, comment on this video, we would love to hear from you. And by doing that, you're also going to be entered to be a winner. Three people are going to win a gift bundle of a pillow blank, a pillow insert, uh, the Emma's Collage CD, a, a bundle of fat quarters uh, from Kimber the Kimberbell fabric line, 
the two stabilizers, I mean, what a prize package, right? So I hope you had fun tonight. Before I leave, I'm going to ask uh, Maddie and Jamie if there are any other questions that people have on YouTube or Facebook, um, anything I can help answer before we leave. Oh, let's show the CD again. Okay. This is what it looks like. This is what you're going to be looking for um, at your favorite quilt shop. Now, these quilt shops sell, uh, of course, in, the, in their stores. But if you don't live near a store, that's okay because so many of them also sell online. So you can find Emma's Collage Pillows at your favorite quilt shop, whether that's in-store or online. It comes with uh, the three different designs. You're going to have Bless This Nest, which is that beautiful um, uh, bird's nest with the birds in it. You're going to have the word home, which is gorgeous too. And then, of course, the florals that my friends over here are making tonight. Uh, we did them on our pillow cover blanks. Again, those are brand new in your quilt shop. We also have the pillow pillow forms. This is what the instructions uh, printed out look like, but that's, we will walk you through every single step. We have an amazing, I say this all the time, but I'll never get tired of saying it. We have an amazing product development team here at Kimberbell that works so hard to make sure that these instructions are just right. They, they take the step-by-step -step pictures, they write the instructions, they test and test and retest because they want you to have the best success with Kimberbell products. All right. So check that out at your favorite store. All right. Any other questions? Nothing? Yeah, yeah. All the instructions are on the CD as a PDF, and you can, uh, you know, just print them from home. Many people actually like to uh, view them. For me, I like to just view them on my iPad or even on my phone or on my computer. So there's so many different ways of viewing these kinds of things, but we will promise to to help you feel the most success by walking you through every single step as we end let's check back over here real quick with janessa and joy and jenny and see what's going on wow okay i love what i'm seeing here check this out uh janessa let's go ahead and show the camera it doesn't look like a flower quite yet right but wait so you go through the next steps. Yeah, that'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm <laughs> so excited to see that. And I love how you used uh, the oranges for your extra flowers against that blue. Yeah, I thought that looked really nice. That is beautiful. Thank you. Oh, I cannot wait to, you know, watch our, our Facebook page because we are going to be posting pictures. We're going to stay a little bit later tonight, guys, right? I mean, we, we got charcuterie boards to eat and uh, we want to finish these. And then Joy, go ahead and show us yours. I am so excited. This is like way bright for me. <laughs> I love the little bits of pink and red poking out from the bright flower. So I can't wait to see how we'll stitch. Yeah. Anyway. Oh my gosh. All right. Fun. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining me today. Again, uh, my name is Kim from Kimberbell, and I want to thank all of my friends here at Kimberbell. They're all part of the Kimberbell team uh, on different teams here. They're amazing people. Um, thank you guys for, for doing this tonight. Are you ready to eat? Are you guys ready to take a break? <laughs> or we can bring the food to you. Hey, that's what it's all about, right? Fun, food, friends, family, fabric, fabric, all of it, right? So if you decide to do this with your friends or family, we'd love to see pictures. Go ahead and post on the Kimberbell Facebook page or on our private Facebook page, which we'd love for you to join called Kimber Bellas and Fellas. Join us over there. We can't wait to see what you create. Thanks for joining me, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye.